Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to give you a step-by-step -step guide how to deal with the intramolecular Diels-Alder reactions. So when it comes to regular Diels-Alder reactions, like the one that I have on the screen, typically we are not going to have any problems predicting the product here and in this reaction it's going to look something like that. Well, when it comes to the intramolecular versions of this reaction, things can be a little bit trickier. So let me copy the version of my reaction from up above and when it comes to the intramolecular version of this reaction, the diene, the left molecule, and my diene file, they are going to be connected with each other. So I will very schematically show it as this semicircle. But because these guys are connected, those same atoms are also going to be connected by a chain in our product as well, looking something like that. Which means that if regular deals all the reaction gives us one cycle, the intramolecular deals all the reaction is going to give us two cycles right away. And typically we are going to be creating that extra cycle on the side of our molecule. However, once in a blue moon, on a rare occasion, you can see a reaction where you are actually going to be creating a strange looking bridge going over your molecule, something like that. These cases are significantly more rare, so within the scope of your course, if you are going to be seeing the intramolecular version of the deals all the reaction, that is going to be the first version and not the second one. Now, since molecules are virtually never going to be given to you in this very nice form where you're just clicking them onto each other, there is a little bit of an algorithm how to approach those questions. So with that in mind, let's look at my first example over here. And trust me, this one is probably one of the easiest intramolecular deals all the reactions you can think of. Now, to start off my analysis here, I can see that I have the electron withdrawing group, my carbon so the part with the electron withdrawing group is most likely going to be my diene file, because on the other side of the molecule I also see a combination of two double bonds right next to each other, so that is going to be my diene. Now, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to number my molecule, but I'm not going to number it all the way through, rather I'm going to number my molecule in such a way as to make my life easier predicting the Diels-Alder product. So what what I mean by that here is that I will number my diene 1 through 4, then I will number my diene file as carbons 5 and 6, and the middle portion of the molecule I will number with letters A, B, C, and D, because I have 4 carbons in this particular example, so I'm going to use 4 letters. The reason why I like to do that is to separate my two cycles that I'm going to be forming here. My atoms 1 through 4 and then 5 and 6 going to make my main ring, my 6 member ring for the deals all the reaction, and my atoms A, B, C, and D, those are going to be my second ring that I'm also forming in this molecule. So the next thing that I'm going to do here, I'm going to redraw my diene and I'm going to redraw it right away in the S cis conformation the way I needed for this reaction. And I will also show my carbons 5 and 6 from my diene file nearby, so it's easier for me to visualize how this reaction is going to occur. And the reason why I am orienting my atoms like that is because I remember that atoms 4 and 5 are connected by the chain of atoms A, B, C, and D, so I'm going to have to have my atom 4 and my atom 5 on the same side of the molecule. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to start dressing up my molecule with the substituents that I have sitting on it. On my atom number 6, I have my electron withdrawing group, so I'm going to show that guy. Then I'm going to show my atom A. And the important thing here to keep in mind is that we always have to be extremely careful with our stereo configurations so we don't flip flop something accidentally. In my original molecule, the double bond between atoms 3 and 4, that was the E double bond or a trans double bond if you like. That means that whenever I'm redrawing my molecule, I would also have to make sure that I am drawing that in E stereo configuration. Likewise, when I draw my atom D, I will also remember that 
That was E in the original molecule, or trans if you like, and I'm also going to show it in the E stereo configuration here as well. Now, I remember that my atoms B and C connect A and D, but I am not actually going to be drawing those over here in the chain. I will just barely mark roughly where they are because I don't want to over clutter my picture because right now the atoms B and C, they're not that relevant. Later on, I am going to bring them in, but for right now, I just want to know roughly where they are and kind of forget about them for the moment. Now, before I start drawing my product, I want to finalize my stereochemistry here, and I see that my atom A over here, that is the out group, which means that in my final product, it will be cis to my electron withdrawing group that I have on my atom number 6. So, with all of this information in mind, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by drawing a six-membered ring as my stem for my molecule. Then I'm going to number it one through six like I would do for any other deals all the reaction. From this point, I'm going to add my electron withdrawing group onto atom number six where it belongs, and I've decided that I'm going to put it on a dash. Why? Well, why not? It doesn't really matter whether you put your first group on the dash or a wedge, but as soon as you put your first group on your molecule, the rest of the molecule would have to follow the suit. So what I mean here is that I know that my group A or my atom A is out group, so it has to be cis to my electron withdrawing group. Since my electron withdrawing group is on the dash, it means that I'm going to show my atom A on the dash as well. My atom D, that guy is trans to my electron withdrawing group, so I will have to show my atom D on the wedge. Now, at this point, I'm going to outline where the atom B and C should be, roughly in my molecule, and connect everything by bonds, giving me the following molecule. And since in this case attack could happen from either or side, we are going to get this as our final product plus the corresponding enantiomer. So now we have our final product with the correct stereochemistry. See, that wasn't that bad. Well, let's give it another try. How about this molecule? This guy looks like a complete monstrosity, but I promise you, if we are going to follow the same pattern as before, we are going to be able to get our product. So, I have identified my diene, which is on the left side of this molecule as well, so I'm going to number it 1 through 4. Then, I'm also going to number my dienophile, 5 and 6, and I'm going to number the middle atoms as A, B, and C. I only have three atoms in this example, so it's just A, B, and C, and we don't have atom D. And of course, I will label for myself that I have the electron withdrawing group on my atom number six. Now, I am ready to start building my molecule. First, I'm going to outline my diene in the S cis conformation, and I'm going to start dressing it up with the groups. On the atom number two, we have the methyl group, so I'm going to show the methyl group right there, and likewise on number three, on carbon number three, we have the methoxy group, so I'm also going to show that guy. Like in the previous case, I'm going to show my atom A over here, and I can see that in my original molecule, A is on the same side, or it is cis to my methoxy group, so I will have to show my A uh, cis to my methoxy group as well, which essentially means that A is our out group again in this uh, example as well. Then I'm going to start working on my in a file, so I will show my atoms 5 and 6, I will draw chlorine on atom number 5, because we have chlorine on atom number 5 in the original molecule, and cis to that chlorine, we have our electron withdrawing group, so I will show that part as well. Now, atom C is trans to my electron withdrawing group, so I will show it accordingly on my picture here as well. Finally, I will outline for myself where the atom B is without actually drawing it so I don't clutter my picture. And now I am ready to start constructing my final product here. So like in the previous case, I am going to start by drawing the six-membered ring with a double bond and numbering it one through six, how we do it for any other deals all the reaction. Then, on my atoms 2 and 3, I have methyl and methoxy group, so I'm going to show those guys right away as well. Since atoms 2 and 3 are sp2 hybridized, I do not expect any stereochemistry here, so there is nothing to worry about, I can just put them on the plain lines and forget about them. Then, 
I'm going to show my electron withdrawing group. Like in the previous case, I will do it on the dash, because why not? Since cis to my electron withdrawing group I have the chlorine atom, I will show the chlorine atom also on the dash here as well, on carbon number 5, and I will show the carbon C on the wedge, on carbon number 5 as well, because carbon C is trans to my electron withdrawing group. Atom A has to be cis to my electron withdrawing group, because atom A is the out group. And finally, now I will outline where my atom B is going to be, connect everything by the bonds, and get my final product, plus, of course, the corresponding enantiomer that we are going to get in this reaction as well. So, as you can see, no matter how scary your molecule might look like, for as long as you follow these steps, for as long as you follow this algorithm, you will be able to construct your final product without any problems and with the correct stereochemistry. So, the only thing that is left right now is to practice, which you can find if you go to organicchemistrytutor.com, where I have hundreds of practice questions for different topics in organic chemistry. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and subscribe for more. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time.